Mr. Chairman, uh, dear colleagues, being an Austrian school economist by myself, I'm very pleased at the opportunity uh, to speak at this uh, Friedrich Hayek Society conference. Uh, as an economist who is uh, in the governmental experts council responsible for the competition policy, I, I believe that the works of uh, Friedrich Hayek and particular works uh, the meaning of competition and the competition as discovery procedure are very important to uh, I'm very important uh, to my profession, uh, professional sphere. Despite the fact that these works are widely cited uh, and not only in the Austrian school, in my view they are still highly underestimated. The irony is that governments often make decisions concerning prices, technologies, business models, in hopes of simulating competition. However, if the correct decisions were known, we would not need competition in the first place. I suppose uh, most of you share the belief that uh, governments all over the world very often make people unhappy. However, rephrasing the famous notion by Russian writer Leo Tolstoy, I would add that every unhappy country is unhappy in its own way. Today, uh, I'm not trying to, to bring up a new theoretical knowledge, but something that will demonstrate particular circumstances of time and space, place, some dispersed knowledge concerning Russia. Uh, in my view, uh, to be short, in my view, the main competition policy problem in Russia is that we have, is that the government is trying to solve problems in an incorrect order, and particularly by this, by this reason, reason, solve them incorrectly. The promoting of competition has been one of the main uh, issues in Russia for the last 30 years. It should be noted that the lack of competition one, was one of the factors that led to the disintegration of the USSR. The citizens of the great country have been taken hostage by the monopoly of manufacturers, distributors, and the empty stores. This is, uh, this is a quote uh, from the 500 days pro uh, program that was uh, uh, that was that was written at the end uh, at the end of this uh, Soviet Union. This uh, this uh, program was never officially adopted, but its antitrust but its antitrust ideas and it had many antitrust ideas were adopted almost immediately. Uh, Anti-monopoly law was adopted and the anti-monopoly committee was also established. In 1990, uh, the staff limit of uh, Russian anti-monopoly anti -monopoly committee was 150 50 members and today it's more than 3,000 3, uh, 3, members and the number of antitrust cases have risen uh, correspondingly. Now, uh, now the competition is still a problem in Russia. Not long ago, Russian President Vladimir uh, Putin has adopted a new, pro a new pro program, National Competition Development Plan, uh, and it's a 1,000 days plan, so plan for three, year, three years, and it's even less ambitious than was uh, that was the pre previous plan. The competition policy goals were never realized. And uh, I will provide you with my explanation why, why this happened, what went wrong. In his work, Free Market on the CH, Richard Epstein remarked that the first task of an economic policy is to pick up the low hanging fruit which means we first need to solve correctly considerable, uh, considerably easy, easy cases 
and only then move to their less important and controversial issues. What does it mean for competition policy? In competition policy, like in any other policy, we have these two kinds of issues. Example of low hanging fruit of easy case are, uh, is a free trade policy, is a case of protectionism. According to different uh, polls of economists, we could, uh, we could even say that to be an economist is generally to be for free trade. And there is also a controversial case. It's, anti, it's antitrust. There are, very many, uh, there are very many skeptics of antitrust inside the economic profession, and probably particularly inside the Austrian, uh, inside the Austrian school. And the critics and the skeptics have their, uh, have their reason, in spite of the fact that, uh, uh, that antitrust law exists all over the world for more than 100 uh, years. We still do not, uh, uh, we do not have the research that shows, uh, shows the result. For example, very, very famous American economist, William Kovacic, who happened also to be the head of the American Antitrust Authority, Federal Trade Commission, uh, made a report. The Federal Trade Commission at 100 years, so it's, it was universal. Uh, in this report, there were sections concerning the measurement of the result of the antitrust policy. There are eight eight pages. Uh, these, uh, these pages are full of the ideas about why this measuring, measuring is important, why we could uh, principally measure these results, but nevertheless, there are no information about the results themselves. If some drug, if some medicine would, would be the subject of this discussion, in such circumstances, it would not get an approval. It would be seen as an untested drug. What in this context made the Russian government, actually very many different, uh, different Russian governments? The Russian government started with a uh, difficult case, hard case, complicated, ambiguous case, with, with antitrust. Uh, with antitrust and resolved it incorrectly. As for more easy, more easy one, there are some, uh, there are still uh, some problems. Look at the WTO. Uh, look at the WTO statistics. According to WTO statistics, average uh, average import tariff in Russia is much higher in, than in the G7. G7 countries, and it's only average. Uh, it's only average tariffs because uh, because there are also unaverage tariffs. Uh, Russian uh, Russian government uh, likes to speak likes to speak about so-called uh, socially important goods. It's generally it's food. If we look at the import tariffs on these uh, socially important foods, we will find out that they are generally much, much more high than the tariffs on average. So, even in the sphere where, uh, that it is of sub uh, uh, social importance, the interests of Consumers are not on the first place, and Russian consumers know it. Uh, in one of the public opinion polls, in answer to the query whose interest the Russian government protects, uh, prefer to protect, 34 answered that their interest of manufacturers come first, and only 11, so one third of the previous number, concluded that the interest of consumers upper amount. 
today, uh, today when the motto, uh, uh, the motto of the Russian economic policy is importazemishenia, it's a Russian word uh, that means substitution of imported goods. Situation is, is even better, and we, had, we have also very many non-tariff barriers that are concentrated mainly in the uh, state procur procurement. Procurements for uh, hospitals, for schools, for, for prisons. So, the, here we see that the interests of consumers are not seen as a priority even when it comes to the interest of the most vulnerable groups of the population. We have this situation not only, uh, not only in external trade, but also in internal trade. Uh, uh, here is the other case of the strange, uh, strange, uh, choice of, uh, strange choice of policy. So one more, one more public opinion poll. Russians were asked, what sectors of Russian economy are the most competitive? Uh, I provide you only with the beginning and the end of this list. So, most consumers, uh, uh, consumers think that the most competitive sector is retail trade. And the least competitive sector is, is, sector, of public, uh, is sector of public, uh, sector of public, uh, or sector of pu public utilities. These opinions are confirmed by the more hard economic data. In Russia, the, in Russia, the total share of all Russian retail chains and Russian statistics include uh, treat as a retail trade chain uh, even two kiosks that are under uh, combined uh, uh, that, that uh, two kiosks that they have the same uh, owner. For example, so the total share is 34 percent. We could uh, we could compare this situation with Germany. In Germany, it is the share only of the two biggest uh, biggest retail chains. Nevertheless, it was uh, it was the retail trade that became the target of the most hard antitrust policy. Approximately, uh, approximately 10 years ago, uh, the period that draft, the draft law with many provisions, inclu including, for example, the provision that no, uh, no retail chain can have more than 25% in the territory of municipality. In no other uh, Russian sector, we have such provisions, like, like, like in Germany, every uh, every business, every business has the right to expand. The right, uh, the right to acquire competitors is restricted, but only restricted and not prohibited. Whatever were the share. Leading Russian, leading Russian economists expressed their opinion in the state Duma that the draft law was harmful. And so did consumer societies. But nevertheless, this draft was adopted and signed, signed into law. So we have a rather unusual situation, something like, something like import quota, but it's not import quota, but it's uh, internal trade quota. Some providers could not expand, uh, expand uh, their, their output. Of all recommendations of economists, only the most controversial were chosen. It, it was uh, antitrust, uh, antitrust idea. Russian, uh, Russian antitrust uh, law is uh, generally similar to antitrust legislation in Europe and especially in Eastern Europe. But there are some differences. First, of these differences, 
uh, is uh, the scope of activity of Russian uh, federal anti-monopoly anti service. Here are some figures. There is the international rating of antitrust agencies that includes most important agencies of the world. Uh, if, uh, if uh, we count the total, the total sum of the all, for example, dominant cases uh, in participants of this rating, we will, we will find out that there are, uh, the, the, in the previous year, there were approximately 1,600 dominance cases all over, all over the world. But, but more than 80% of these cases were cases of Russian Federal Antitrust Service. In Russia, we had 1,304 1, cases. And for the comparison, Bundeskartellamt had only 15 cases. The, situ uh, the situation is not, uh, is not very dif uh, different if we look at their mergers policy. Russian Federal Anti-Monopoly Service blocked half of the total sum of blocked mergers, and for the comparison, uh, uh, Bundeskartell Armed blocked zero. This, uh, this difference, uh, difference in quantity tells us that probably there, there will be some uh, difference in quality, in quality, and there is one. Economists uh, Boyka, Schleffer, uh, and Vishny in their book Privatizing Russia, referring to the events of those years uh, of the early eras of Russian antitrust, discovered that the anti-monopoly agency had put on the list of monopolies thousands of companies, a dozen national monopolies, along with local bakeries and bath, bath houses, I, I see. After that, uh, after that, that they cited the example of Russian, Russian uh, antitrust service as the main example of the corruption of the, uh, of the, antitrust, uh, of the, uh, of the antitrust law. The situation have not changed since these early times. Uh, in, two, in 2007, entrepreneur Evgenia, small entrepreneur, individual entrepreneur Evgenia Avtanova, installed a children's trampoline on the central square in the small city of Gornalataisk. She charged 50 rubles. It was about $2 then for 20 minutes of jumping. Two years later, another entrepreneur, Ivan Koshkin, installed another trampoline in close vicinity to the first one. Ivan changed, uh, charged the same price for jumping, only he did not limit the time. And soon, Evgenia followed the same policy. Two more years later, Fass shows up on the square and asks these two entrepreneurs to explain why they charge the same 50 rubles for unlimited jumping. Actually, we see the competition has worked. Uh, uh, prices efficiently decreased, the service efficiently expanded, but nevertheless, Fass did not accept the explanation of entrepreneurs why the, the price is the same and find, find them for the price fixing. It's some kind of paradox. The antitrust law that was meant to be applied to Rockefellers in Russia is applied to the owners of the small businesses or to, to solve small household problems. Here are some, uh, here are some other examples of r typical Russian antitrust cases. Uh, including, for example, that somebody did not let you the bus room at the bus station. The bus station was charged. I, I criticized antitrust laws uh, for a long time. Actually, not law, but their theoretical foundations, to be exact. When I began preparing economic expert opinions for Russian antitrust trials, I realized how far I was from the reality. I discovered that the FAS agents did not 
embody the Chicago or Harvard School theories. In fact, they were far from every kind of economics. However, later, when I began to collect, to collect antitrust enforcement statistics, I got surprised one more time. It turned out that the cases I had given my expert testimony, and those were cases that involved big companies, were not typical ones, and the typical ones were trampoline cases and the, and the cases that you can see, uh, see just now. So it turned out that by criticizing the policy of the government, I was nevertheless idealizing it still. So, uh, so my summary, a government that cannot handle simple cases correctly should not handle complicated ones. Thank you.